study Korea. I'm actually in Sioux College and doing my placement there. Um, March is coming up and March break and kids will be home and people will be uh, wanting things to do. So we thought we'd share on how to make a simple jump bag. So what I've done here is I've traced my husband's drum out on this piece of paper. We will be sending, we'll be making kits for individuals. I'm not sure how many there will be. There will be a, a, a several choices of, of different uh, workshops that you could take over the March break, and this would be one of them. We'll have the basic materials we'll need in each kit. And over here, these are the tools that you'll be needing. This is a, not a necessary thing, but some people will like use pinking shears. They put a nice little finished edge on, uh, on your on your product. Measuring tape, you want to measure things. Here's your white chalk only because any other chalk will leave a stain on your cloth. Seam ripper for those of us who make mistakes and that would be me. Regular scissors and of course pins. I'm a strong believer in pins. We also have a iron plugged in and ready to go. I'm also a strong believer in using your iron. Best friend, best friend when you're gonna sew. So with this drum, I want to make it two inches larger or an inch and a half, depending what material or how large your drum is. You understand whatever material they send, we send you, that's that's the size you get. Hopefully it's big enough for the drum you have, if you have one. Or maybe you want to make a drum bag for an aunt, uncle, friend, whomever. So I've traced the drum out. I've lined up my material outside in. This is a fabric that has a geometrical design so I've trimmed it to where I actually have a center. So I've folded this drum paper in half and I've centered it down with my, I just do this by eye and it's not like anybody's going to sit there and pick your, uh, pick your thing apart. But some people are picky, I understand that, and that's, that's entirely up to you. So line that up there. Like I said, you want to make it about two inches bigger. So just make follow the curve of the the curve of the of the paper. And that's as far as you have to go. Trimming these off. And I'll use these pinking shears. Hopefully they, they're sharp enough to cut this. Just to show you how they look. Some people don't know what they are. They've always wondered what they are laying around, but they're for, they stop fraying actually. They prevent, you know, fraying of the material after. So it doesn't get all strings all over the place. If the circle isn't perfect, don't worry about it. All that nice finishing touch happens when you do the sewing. You don't even really have to cut these off if you don't want to. There. There's the shape of your drum. Now this is the same material that we've used here. We flipped it over. So that the, the pattern is running the opposite way and we're gonna make our, that's where we're gonna put, make, put our drawstring in. And it looks kinda nice when it's done for accenting. This here is gonna be to make our drawstring. And this here piece here will be Give our drum its depth, so you'll you'll have to take that measurement too. If it's a with you know different size drum than most people, some people have a deeper drum, some people not as. So from there to there, that's what that's this piece of that before. So measure that if you need to, or eyeball it whenever you choose. Okay, take a break. These wider strips. Make sure you put right. Take the one. You'll have two of these. Take one. Put right sides together. And you can tell the right side, most prints have kind of a blurred out look on. And here, if you just check the, it's a different color. It's a much more brighter, usually, color. There is the odd cloth that you really can't tell much of a difference. But you want to pin that all along the edge, about every two or three inches. Some people who are very adept at sewing will probably miss, omit this part altogether. That's up to you again, if you want to pin that all or not. So you pin that all along, 
going along right to the end over here keep going keep going oh we're a little short which is why we have two in one side of my material here now we have to bit we have to make these two strips that were here these three four five inch strips whatever they are the larger ones and we have to we have to make sure it's going to be long enough so you can either take a measuring tape and go along there and if you don't have that measuring tape hey that's fine let's just take the material and do it so we'll go all along there and it's a slow go because you got to make sure you don't it's you got to line them up every little bit line it up otherwise it won't come out the proper the proper length and you have to follow the curve so you might be moving an inch at a time sometimes keep following keep following that curve That's the part my hands don't work as good as they used to. Arthritis has done that. But I'm going to use them until I can't use them anymore. I said, oh, see, we're going to be a little bit short there. And that's why we did that. So. If you measure that, maybe it looks like about five, six inches. We'll add five or six inches to this piece right here. You can just snip it off anywhere if it's a little as long as it's a little bit longer we can always size it up when we get to the end of the sewing part okay, now i've already put a red thread up here on my machine i've done a red bobbin once again that's entirely up to you some people are picky some people aren't you don't see unless like it's top stitching or really loose stitching you don't often see that i'm going to sew past these at the edge of most materials, they have, uh, they call it nap. It's, sometimes it's white, sometimes it's got needle marks. It's where they attach the, the material to the, to the looms when they need it. Okay, needle down, ladies and gentlemen, and off we go. Back it up. I should have backed it up at the beginning here to tie it off, but it's just a temporary thing anyway. I, could, I know it's only five or six inches long. I'm just going to... I'm just going to cut it a little bit past five or six inches and then I'll trim it off when I get to the end. So now, right sides together, see, bright, dull. That seam we just done has to be on this side. So make sure you get those right sides together. Otherwise, we'll get this all sewn together and we'll have that big seam there all exposed. Once again, this time we're going to pin it every couple of inches. Now, when you get down to the curve here, you're going to probably pin it every inch because you want to keep that curve in there. Round and around. You do that all the way around, you get to the end. Don't cut that off yet. We're going to cut it off after we've sewn it. I've been doing this for quite some time, so I'm going to be comfortable with doing, doing this without pins. But if you haven't sewn much or haven't sewn before, I'm, I suggest that you use the pins because the material will crawl on you. And here we are, back to the sewing machine. So I'm going to start in a little bit. I'm going to take this foot and I'm going to line that material up right with the edge of my foot. And I'm going to try and keep that same reveal all the way to the end. So forward a little bit, back up to the edge, then forward again. Go slow, go slow. Unless you're an expert and have done this a million times, just take your time and and get it right. Okay. See so we flatten that seam on the inside. It'll be nice and flat in there. Now here we are at the at the curb, see? That's where that pinning comes in handy. 
Okay, here we are in our last little stretch. Remember I said we're going to cut it a little bit long? Well, that's... So keep an eye where your bottom... Where your bottom material is. Go slow because it will speed up on your head. When you get close to that bottom, do a little back stitch. And that, that reinforces that seam and stops it from coming undone. And there you go. So you have that little that little bit left there. Okay, start. Now I'm gonna trim that. Looks like it's a little bit off, it doesn't matter. None of that matters right now. So here we go, we got half of it done. I like to trim off of all my little threads, but not everybody does that either until they're totally done. Same thing goes for the other side. Same thing, pin it, pin it, pin it. It's good to pin, especially when you get down where the curving is, because sometimes that you can't make that curve quite as nice when you when you don't have it pinned. And be careful that the material don't don't shift on you while you're. I'll show you. I'll show you what I'm talking about when uh, we get to it, because I've done it so many times. I've had to take stuff apart. When, and I'll tell you, that's that's just outright annoying. I've always been in such a big hurry when I was learning how to sew. I didn't, uh, I didn't take care. So I ended up doing the same thing two or three times when I didn't have to be. Okay, we're down to three pieces of material. So, like we said earlier, I've cut this piece of cloth this away to accent, you know, make your bag look a little bit fancy. So, when we sew this on the top, we want to make sure it's going to, no raw edging over here because we're going to put a, a drawstring through there. So, we don't want, uh, we don't want it coming apart and fraying and looking nasty. I had to sew two pieces together. Now, it, it's not that you don't have to match everything up perfectly, but I did because I was able to. We're gonna try, see if we get your kits ready. We'll try and make it to make it be as good as that. So you can do those same little. Might as well look nice if you could make it nice. So I'm going back over to the iron now because I want to put a, a hem on here because, like I said, I don't want it to fray. Like right here, it's all hemmed in. So when the drawstring grows in, it doesn't fray. It, it's all no raw edges. So we're gonna go over to the iron. I'll tell you what. I'll just be a little bit more cautious and remember that you guys haven't possibly done this before. I'm going to stretch that a little bit taut so it, and I'm going to know that I got to hem it in. There's not at least at least that much. So, off we go to the ironing. Call it ironing, but we're not ironing. We're gonna press it. So that's about a half an inch there, what we marked. So I'm going to line that up half an inch in. I'd like to be able to do it twice, but I don't have enough material. So I'm only gonna be able to fold it once and hopefully reinforce it with stitching so it doesn't fray. Because I could only fold it once, I went ahead and used the crimping shears to get that little zigzag cut we talked about earlier. Help stop it from fraying. And if it doesn't line up 100% on your bag, it doesn't matter. Because once you pull the drawstring, nobody's ever going to see that. Same thing. About half an inch in. Pressing is pressing. It's holding that down. Usually you have steam in there. Once you do that, it stays perfectly in place. Perfect line. No mistakes. No. Thank <laughs> you. 
I've got to, to uh, make the top. So what I'm going to do, I have to hem the top as well. Since I have more of the red down here, I think I'll make the top out of the red. So once again, half inch, press it, then another half inch, back over to the, back over to the other. Take your time. This is the top of the bag that we're hemming. I like to do my hemming. Even on my skirts, a lot of times I'll hem before I even put the skirt together. I don't necessarily wait for the skirt to be done and then do the hem after. I like to do my hem when the material's nice and flat and like a like a clear easel. I don't have a long extension on my my get up. That'll be sewed first, so there. And then one more time. Just like a pair of pants, you know, you hem a pair of pants, that's what you're doing here. You're just hemming it to get that nice finished look when you're done. It doesn't stay down, but when you start sewing it, you can see the line, huh? The line you have to follow. Did you guys see me burn myself there? This is not the first time. You have a little line you can follow and guide you. Now, off well, we go. When you do it this way, you don't necessarily have to use pins because you already have your line to follow. Go slow, go easy, should be no problem. Now, some people like to use a zigzag stitch here because it covers a bigger area in case you miss the... Uh, Missed the seam, but I'm just going to go ahead and sew it. Again, back it up. There we go. Sew it about a quarter inch from the edge. Just say we'll put it to the side of this foot and then the material is following the edge of the, the red cloth. This is also folded under where we ironed it. It up, pull it over. Now let's let's sew down that side as well. It's got to be done. So we might as well do it now. Now let's go over here and do that other end as well. Needle down. Forward, back. Back. Now I'll get my hefty little scissors over here and trim all those little threads. I don't. I'm one of those uh, kind of, I do dishes. I'm cook. I'm a tidy cook. I usually wash my dishes as I'm cooking. And I'm same with sewing. I like to keep my area tidy at least stop once in a while and do it okay now we got no seams yep. now that we press that little half inch fold we want to take it down to about oh let's say right in the middle of our design here so one of those little white and press it all along just press it because we're going to use that Oh, that's not. We're going to use that seam to line it up, and we're going to use this pressing to create our 
or line I wish to follow on the machine. So there you have it. Some places might be off a little bit, but it doesn't matter. Like I said, nobody's going to see that. And off we go now to the sewing machine. About halfway. Remember we went to about halfway following so where we did our fold with the iron. So if we flip this over now and we want to do our sewing, we know roughly where we have to sew because it's the same pattern, same place on the opposite side. But I'm going to go up about a quarter of an inch and do my sewing there. Back to nice and nice and straight as you can because it's like seeing that people are going to see. Don't do what I do, people. Just go slow. Now we're sewing this on the top here. We have we have it going down to here, but we're sewing here. That's what we're lined up with, so we can get as straight of a line as we can on our finished product. Now, you can stop right there and you can sew that onto your bag. But for me, I like to have one more seam in there. So I'm going to put another seam right about where this, right about where that green line is, maybe a little above it. Because I like my drawstring to be a little bit down from the top. I think it looks much nicer. So my foot is following on this between this green and this beige line see the edges of foot there anyway i was saying earlier it's good to have a hobby especially if you've got lots on your brain it helps you just it helps you just to focus on something else and get worries on your mind for a little while be a little break Sometimes when you get away from the couples for a few minutes, sometimes you can come back with a much clearer mind. It's like taking a little holiday. As always, trim, trim, trim for me. No. Now, this didn't line up 100%, and I am not going to sweat that. Bright sides together, and see, that's inside, outside, bright sides together. Uh, I don't know how I did that on this one. Let me have a look. I don't know if I went to the seam or to the middle of the edge. I did go to the middle. So, I started in about the middle of my side here. We're going to overlap that after, so it's not going to be a, a weak, a weak spot. We're going to overlap the two, the two finished edges. Pin that about half an inch in, and then pin away, go round and around. If you pin that seam in there nice and flat, it won't be sticking out up there after. Or maybe you want to do a top stitch. I like top stitching all my work, but not necessarily. It does. It makes it a neater look, and it makes it reinforces that seam, especially if what you're going to be carrying in your bag will be heavy or you're going to be using it a lot. You see top stitching on a lot of clothes. Now 
this is going to go all the way around. I'm just going to put a pin here and there now. But if you're just beginning, I'm telling you, put a pin every couple of few inches. Keep the pin straight as you possibly can, and hopefully your pins are straight. Otherwise, you're going to break your needle. Maybe you don't have another needle or you don't know how to change your needle. But you're going to be angry at yourself anyway. Now, I barely had enough material there to make it around here. So, cross your little fingers. Here we are, pinned all the way around. Like I said, I barely had enough to meet. Luckily, we're going to overlap a little bit, and that's exactly what I wanted it to do. Just a little bit. And when we sew this... All, the, all this edging will be done, covered over, no fraying, no weak spots. We're going to go over that a couple times when we sew it, because that's where this bag is going to take all the pressures when you're opening and closing it and opening with the drawstring. Okay, I'm going to go sew this. I'll be right back. Line it up with the edge of my foot again. Now, some people have a sewing machine that does this. Lucky you. Lucky me. But I don't always use it. But it sure makes it a lot simple. Needle down. Now, here's where the seams overlap a little bit. Remember I said I was going to reinforce it because that takes all the pressure is that one area. I meant it. Okay, lined up with the edge of my foot. Off we go, all the way around. See how that, there's no, no pin there. Now, you see how that material crept? Can you see it? It crept over like that. See, it's because it's moving because I didn't put a pin in there. So you got to keep that lined up. Press down a little bit here to keep it lined. If you're not going to use pins, you're going to have to be very alert. I don't know why I did that, but I did it. Oh, my pins are too far. Oh, see that pin right there, that crooked one? That's a needle breaker. Now, <clears throat> if there had been more material here, I would have done a seam like this, but we don't have that. I don't have it. You will probably have it on yours. There we go. We're done that part. Okay, so here you have your little bag. All nice, nice, nice. This is all nice. We double stowed it. But you know what, you guys? I think I'm going to do a quick little top stitch here. Just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, and that'll reinforce all this a little bit more. Because it is going to be taken to strain as this, this drawstring part, because it, that's the part that's going to be moving eh, all the time. Go. <sighs> so, with the top stitch, this seam right here, you want that seam facing down, down behind this fabric. Do you see how it's down? Put that into the sewing machine like that. Now, drop that foot. You're about a quarter inch down again. You go very, you can pin this. If you're, if you're unsure of yourself, just go ahead and pin that seam down all along there. Back and forth. Here that top stitch is. See, every once in a while I'll stop and make sure that seam is behind this red cloth, not behind the beige. That the seam is called, it's called facing down. And when you do that, you're actually double stitching. So you, you got a whole another hem of reinforcement going on there. And it flattens the, the material. 
and it makes it look like a fresh professional piece. Stop every once in a while and check and make sure that that is still facing down. It can flip on you and you don't realize. It. You can just rub the blade. Sure beats snipping a hole in your claw. And that's what a top stitch does. Isn't that beautiful? Normally I would have done it all the way around on the whole drum bag. You can do that still. If you're careful, you can get that drum bag in there. It will work. Okay, well we got one couple little pieces of cloth left, so we're almost done. Okay, so we need to make a drawstring, and it's got to be long enough to go through both of those all the way. It's got to be doubled, right? Because there's a back and a front. That's not really a whole lot left over. I like to have a little bit longer. So I'm going to add another with this other piece. I'm going to add another maybe four or five inches on there. Not a whole lot, but a little bit. Taking my scissors around the room here. Now, these two cloths aren't exactly the same. For me, anyway, I didn't cut them the same, so I'm just gonna just let me eyeball them here. See, I got them all wampus. I'll just leave it like that, actually. Come and watch me. Show you how I make something that's not quite the same still. Let's sew these two together along that nape. I'm gonna sew it once. I'm going to turn it over. Now we are familiar with the top stitch. And the reason why I didn't go back and forth is because I'll be sewing those again and it'll stop that from fraying at that time. Okay. Why I like to make my own drawstring out of this cloth because it grips really well. It looks really nice. I like it a lot better looking than a piece of string. There's my, my thread haunting me because I didn't trim it off over there. No. Fold that in half. A lot of ways to do this. You can easy, you can just go get a you must see that seam binding stuff in the in the stores. It's already made. You get it, it comes in a little flat package you can buy it. I think they use that kind of stuff they, for, to make jingle dresses too, to hang the jingles on. I think they call it seam binding. You can just use that and you don't have to make this, but hey. It's nice when you can just grab a piece of something you have laying around home and make it. Once again, fold it in. This is like making your own seam binding. Fold it in like that. Same thing over here. Do that all the way down. All the way down. And that's how you make your drawstring. Then you go over here to your handy dandy sewing machine. Put this piece back in it over here. 
Now I'm going to attempt to to make this drawstring without using the iron all the way because it's, I think you got the gist of it. The lighting in here is not very good, and I'm so what we're doing is we're sewing this all the way. The whole length of the bowl. I'm just doing it as I go along here because yeah, sometimes it comes out nice. I make the obvious mistake. Some people use a use a ribbon. Like I said, I like to use the material because it grips really nice. If you don't have any leftover material, well then use whatever you can, I guess. Find uh, something similar color to what's in the what's in the material you use. You can make it out of that. If you don't have the fancy hoity toity native print material, I know it costs an arm and a leg for it. I'm going to always use the same material and do some applique. Maybe next we can do some applique. Show you how to make a make a bear or a bear paw or on your drum bag. Something like that or make your own design. I suppose you could quilt your own dumb bag. I, would, I could dumb bag. You hear that? Do a small quilting project. Quilted drum bag. If it balls up or gets twisted, don't worry about it. You're not going to see 90% of this drawstring. It's going to be inside the canal of your bag. There's things, you know, in sewing to be really, really picky about, and there's things not to be. Depends on what they're being used for. Okay. Okay, now we're going to put this drawstring through our drawstring canal or whatever you want to call it. Sleeve. I don't I don't know where a safety pin is, so I'm just going to put a little nick in there. I'm going to use this big paper clip. And Not in the top space, but in the middle space that I put in there, or you put in there, or I don't know where you're going to put yours. And of course, you crawl that all the way around. It's tedious, it's a pain in the butt, but hey, it's going to be nice. Okay, we pull that drawstring through the top there. They aren't even here, but hey, that's okay for right now, because I'm going to show you a little trick here. Now, all I do, I tie a knot in them. That's it. Make sure there's no little strings hanging around here and there. If you want, if, there's, if you have them long enough, you can tie a little knot in there as well. I think that might have been what I done on this one. No, it's never so long. I just, I don't, I don't worry about stuff like that. But if you do, you can hem it, whatever you like. Now, there you go. Tie it up. Opens and closes nicely. Now, I'm going to pretend this is a drum because, I, like I said, I don't want to put my drum on here. But how we do ours, because I, I don't have a drum bag. We have just a, not I don't, I don't have a drum. We just usually uh, put our drum and we tie it off. This usually goes in the back. Tuck it all in there nice, nice. Then we put our drum in the bag. Now, this is not as big so as you can see, but hey, fits in there. That will get more easy to do. Well, the handle doesn't do it any justice here. Let me get it out of the hole here, see if it kind of looks nice. It's not big enough, but I'm trying to get you to see. And we've got a nice little drum bag. 
carry it around, carry it on your arm. This one here has a lot more body to it. And I want, what I want to show you about this one is it's all the same pattern. Everything's the same, what we shared. The only thing is I've got a lining in this one and padding. Just to help protect that drum a little bit. You can put it in a cloth and make this thin one or this one with padding. And to do this one with padding, you do, I use uh, quilting batten. You can get this at different thicknesses, as you see. I cut these out to the size of that bag, as I considered. And then you'll just cut yourself out a Piece of trick, a big enough piece, but cut yourself out another piece of uh, material of any kind. No one's going to see it except for you because it's inside the bag. Oh, anyway, this of course. So what you do is you cut out two more. You cut out two of these, two of these, two more of your two of everything more. So you're going to put your original cloth. Before you sew it together, you put stack them all on top of each other. Sew them all together just like we did right a minute ago. But you will need pins because you're going to be dealing with a lot more layers of cloth. And you're going to have to keep them in place as you go. I don't know uh, if that helps you any. If you wanted to make a, a padded one or maybe if you need, let us know. And I'll, we'll, redo, we'll do another video with a, with a padded drum bag if you, if you, so, if you so choose. Okay, that's it. That's all. I hope I uh, was clear enough. I've never made a video before. This is my first one. But, uh, hopefully I'll get better. Okay, have a good night. Mm -hmm.